Hey trappers, I wanted to do a little video here for you in regards to how chain length or chain attachment um, relates to whether a trap has square jaws or round jaws. Okay, here you can see I have a square jaw. This is a square jaw dogless wolf creek number three and a duke number three which is a round dog trap um, i chose no offsets just for demonstration purposes you, you, what i want to show here can be seen a lot more easily with a with a regular jaw trap now each of these traps is a quarter inch nut placed in the middle of the jaws First off, we're going to start with the square jaw trap. Okay, that quarter inch nut makes a gap between the jaws. This is just a piece of 3 16 inch round stuff. That's between the jaws there. And as I move that along the face of the jaws toward the outside, you see that gap is the exact same width the whole way. Both sides. It's just because of the mechanics of a square jaw trap. Um, when, when it's basically the, the gap between the jaws is the same along the whole length of the face. Now, the round jaw. Rods in there again. As I move it to there, as you can see, the gap actually narrows. Narrows on both sides as it goes out toward the lever. So this 3 16 inch rod, once it hits about there, that's all the further that rod can move toward the lever. It's the exact same on the other side. I mean, now, brings up the question, how does that play into what I feel um, matters when it comes to the attachment of the chain? Although this square jaw trap is is not set up that way i just use this one to, for demonstration purposes um a square jaw trap i believe should be center swiveled i'm directly off the center of the base and that is because because these jaws don't narrow when there's a gap in them toward each lever um it it, it can cause a paw to easily, it's going to, if, if an animal's in the trap and it's pulling on the stake, that paw can easily slide all the way over there. Whereas on this trap, on the round jaw trap, it's side swiveled. The animal's paw can only go so far because this gap actually tightens. It can only go so far. Basically, it, it comes down to you have a lot less sliding occurring in a round jaw trap um, when you compare it to a square jaw trap. So that is why I believe a square jaw trap is best if it is center swiveled. Um, you won't get that side sliding to the opposite side of the chain um, like you do if a square jaw trap is swiveled off the end of the frame. Okay. Now, a round jaw trap, obviously a round jaw trap um, works center, center swiveled, but uh, in my opinion, a round jaw trap works just as well end swiveled, um, because like I said before, you, you really don't get that type of sliding in a round jaw trap. Um, so, and there are some benefits to end swiveling. 
if you are setting um, hard ground conditions, frozen ground, um, just situations where that center swivel can make the make make trap bedding a real a real problem. Um, an end swivel traps. There are situations where it's really nice to have an end swivel trap. Now, I uh, want to talk a little bit about chain length. Um, everybody has their own opinions on chain length. Uh, mine differ probably from a lot of guys. I my, my philosophy on chain length is I want it short enough that it's not a pain to me with a pain for me to deal with while bedding, but I want it long enough that gives me some options at the set. If I have to move the trap bed a little bit, um, I also want it long enough that I get a little bit bigger. You see some guys with four or five, six inch super short chains and the, the, the cat circles that animals produce on those super short chains, I am not a fan of. Um, they can really, really destroy the set. Um, a lot of debris and grass and dirt mounting in the center with those super short chains. Um, I, I like I like a little more length than them real extremely short chains. So a good rule of thumb that I go by. One thing is uh, before I before I describe that, you always hear Western trappers talk about they want uh, to be able to get a trap up on their knee to set it, and. Uh, I, every time I hear a Western trapper say that, I I get the feeling that it comes from the old days at a Victor three ends. Uh, I, I you know a, a double long spring trap sets really nicely over your knee, but uh, with coil spring traps, I, I I just set them on the ground, um, and I thought most guys do. And maybe maybe some of these Western guys are pulling these coil springs up and setting on their knee, but I always felt it was just as easy to uh, just set it, set them on the ground. But anyway, my, my theory on chain length that's a little different than, than some guys, I kind of like to match the length of the chain to the size of the trap. Um, and the reason I do that, take that nut out of there, is, I like to bed my loose jaw on that swivel, on the mid-chain swivel. So obviously I'm going to want that mid-chain swivel somewhere along the center point of the loose jaw. So a good, a good rule of thumb to measure chain length is Take a take a swivel, okay? Let's just let's just uh, imagine that that J hook is not in there. Take a swivel and put a J hook on it. And move that to the end of your trap frame. Put a J hook in it, and then stretch out a length of chain and see how many links you need to get to the end of the frame. Now this is number three machine chain. Uh, so it's the swivel, the J hook, one, two, three, four, five, six. But on a Duke number three, with that width to base, it takes me six links of chain to basically get to the length, the whole length of the base. So then my chain length is basically chain pieces is doubled. You're going to need two pieces of six, two pieces of number three chain, six links each. Swivel in the center whatever end swivel you use. And that makes up a pretty pretty good workable chain length uh, for a Duke number three. It, it allows me to get my loose jaw bedded on the swivel. Um, it gives me a little bit of flexibility at the set and gives the animal a little bit of flexibility um, when they're in the trap. We'll look at another trap here real quick. This is another one of my favorites. This is a Duke one and three quarter. And that, that chain isn't as long, um, but that's about the, the length I like on my one and three quarter size size swivel traps. So like I said before, 
bring your swivel to the end of the base, have a J hook in it, and then see how many links it takes to get across the base. One, two, three, four, five. So five links, swivel, five more links, and these are the JC Connor rod swivels. I'd like to use them for the terminal end. I can hook a, a, a quick link to them real easy to hook to a cable stake or a, a butterfly stake, a chestnut stake to, to, to double, a ring to double stake with. So yeah, that gives me, I don't know, about 12 inches of chain on a, on a one and three quarter. And I'll show you here. It's just like number three. That swivel comes in there real nice to bed the loose jaw on. Um, I have plenty, plenty of chain to reach my stake or if I have to move the bed, if you hit a rock or something a little bit, um, gives the animal a little bit of freedom, but not an excessively long chain that it becomes a pain to deal with at the set and bed, bed at the set. So, but yeah, that's uh, my little oddball theory on chain length. Um, at, least, at least for traps that you're gonna be setting on land um, and bedding, bedding more or less in the dirt. Uh, I kind of like to match my chain to uh, the, the size of the trip, chain length to the size of the trap, more or less. And like I said, Main point of this video, what I wanted to show you is round jaw traps. Uh, they work center swivel, but they also work really well swivel off the end too. But square jaw traps, really in my opinion, work best when they're center swiveled. All right guys, uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to put a couple more videos up on this YouTube channel. Uh, maybe when the season starts, uh, See if I have time to do a few things, but anything you could think of, uh, trap adjustment, uh, problems you're having with a coil spring trap or a body grip or whatever, or you have a certain brand um, that you would like to see me do start to finish. Um, I use a lot of Duke one and three quarters. I was thinking of doing a video of tuning one of those start to finish, maybe a couple small conibears. Um, anything you'd like to see, just comment down below and, uh, I'll take a look at the suggestions and I'll try to do, try to do what I can when I get some time. Thanks a lot.